loads of news coming out of Arcade One Up in advance of CES. We got some announcements that were not planned to be released before CES, but lucky for all of us, there was a technical mistake made by the Arcade One Up marketing team and the rest is history and now we have a lot of great information. A representative from Arcade One Up, John D, went on the Tech Buzz show. I will drop a link to that in the description if you want to watch the whole episode. Um and we And this is by far the best part of the interview. My man vapes while he's being interviewed in an official PR capacity. If that isn't a pro gamer move, I don't know what is. <laughs> we were able to boil down the real announcements, basically the news coming out of that video. And we're gonna lay all of that out for you right now. So let's get into it. The news is virtual pinball from Arcade One Up is confirmed. It's been said before, it's been heavily rumored, the word confirmed has been thrown around, but there's an official from Arcade One Up confirming its presence of a virtual pinball machine and that they will be at CES with V-Pin machines. Here's what happened. The virtual pinball assets, the logo and an image of the Star Wars virtual pinball were accidentally published on arcade1up.com and immediately taken down. Somehow IGN uh, got their hands on this and I guess ran a story prematurely. That story was taken down. But here's what we know uh, now that all the dust has settled. Arcade One Up has created a new logo for its pinball lineup. I think the logo looks awesome, by the way. But more importantly, this suggests that pinball is a major product line for Arcade One Up and not just a product we're going to get this year, one and done. I thought this was interesting. John D on that Tech Buzz episode uh, confirmed that details for the V Pin machines are being finalized even now. We're just a few days away from CES. But even as we speak, the final details of this machine are being worked out with their partners. I assume they mean the licensors, but that's pretty interesting. I mean, these guys must work some long days if they're working on an announcement that's coming in just a couple of days. There will be two virtual pinball machines announced at CES. We know of Star Wars, we've seen the image. Machine looks really cool. There's going to be a second machine there. Neither of these machines will be playable to the general public. They will be in attract mode. They'll be there to look cool, generate interest, but they're not in a finalized form. Apparently the build materials are not yet finalized as well as other details about the machine itself. So you'll be able to look at it, but not touch. Similar to Star Wars Arcade One Up this time last year. Now, before we get into the newly confirmed specs for VPN from Arcade One Up, let's look at some other announcements that were dropped by John D uh, about Arcade One Up in general that are going to be revealed at CES. So there is some early information here. There will be at least five new Arcade One Up titles announced, uh, potentially more because as uh, the representative from Arcade One Up was counting and trying to figure out how many they're announcing, he got as high as six. So there might be a sixth title. There are at least five new titles, and it was suggested that these are just arcade games, so separate from the two virtual pinball machines. Five new arcade titles coming at CES from Arcade One Up. There will be new product configurations and quote-unquote definitely new categories slash new products. Product configurations is interesting because a year ago I would have said, well, that's probably a cocktail cabinet. But we already have cocktail. We already have bar top. So I'm wondering what that means. Does it mean a multi-cade maybe? Um, does it mean you know, a modular system where you can swap in games? A lot of people have asked for swappable control panels, swappable marquees, swappable PCBs so that we can get different games in different cabinets. That would be cool and potentially an answer to the at games model, but there was no additional information given. So we're gonna have to wait until CES for that. International distribution apparently is a big focus for Arcade One Up. That's lacked in the past. Even I've seen some comments on my videos asking when these cabinets are coming to different regions of the world. There hasn't been a lot for you in the past if you're outside the US, a little bit in Canada, not much beyond that. For 2020, it is confirmed that they will have, quote unquote, a lot more distribution to Europe, Asia, and Australia this year. 
Burger Time release date is going to be announced at CES, apparently. I don't know why this has been in limbo. They've had the rights to it for a long time, seemingly, but it's coming to CES, and the representative from Arcade went up reports. It's a really good-looking cabinet in person. I hope that means light-up marquee, by the way. I hope you guys are listening. This thing needs to come with light-up marquee or at least have a special edition of it. I'm done buying stuff without light-up marquees. And then lastly, lots more announcements coming at E3 beyond CES. So what do we know about CES um, and the announcements coming? Well, we've got a number of new titles coming, a number of new products, and a number of things that have not yet been spoiled or revealed are coming at CES. So there's still news to be broken. But then in E3 this summer, there will be a lot more announcements. And it was hinted that actually E3 is the bigger trade show for these guys than CES. So whatever we get at CES, we can assume even more at E3. If all of that's true, that suggests pretty big momentum for Arcade 1UP as a... Okay, so let's talk confirmed specs for the V-Pin machine. I assume that's why you're all here. So let's look at it. And the, the representative from Arcade 1UP tells us these are some of the features, but there are more announcements to come even just about the v-pin but honestly i think there's a lot here so let's look 24 inch primary screen um, and their primary focus is 60 frames per second so it may be 720p it may be 1080p as the final resolution but they're targeting 60 frames per second i think that's really good news that they're prioritizing frame rate i think that's a lot more important than resolution for pinball and I hope that that means, it certainly suggests, that they're also prioritizing minimal flipper lag. Because if you get input lag on pinball, you might as well not even be playing pinball. You really want precision with this. So if they're going for a smooth frame rate, I hope they're also going for the processing power behind it to smoothly process and quickly process the inputs that we need so that we can hit those flippers and get great scores on, on pinball. There will be a second seven inch full color LCD monitor in the back box. So the back box, of course, being that piece at the back of the pinball table that shows your score and other information. So if you look at like a full size Stern pinball machine, for example, you have a small LCD screen there, probably not that far off from seven inches, maybe nine or 10, but that's showing you graphics related to the game. That's showing you information about your performance. Really cool that they're including this. This is something that we didn't get in Toy Shock. Toy Shock just simply had the LED alarm clock style uh, readout that could only display numbers and letters and not imagery. So we're getting a second full color LCD monitor. The primary monitor, that primary 24 inch monitor will be recessed into the cabinet below the glass or plexiglass, whatever it's made out of, but below the top. In the images, this looks really cool. So I'm excited for that. I think this looks good. And I think it'll give, and it, it we'll have to wait and see this in person, of course, but I think that'll give the screen, the whole cabinet, more of a sense of perspective and depth versus just a flat screen laying on top of a flat, slightly tilted surface. We now have that tilted surface and then recessed below at a screen. So hopefully it looks a little bit more pinball authentic. The bezel around the screen is way thinner than what Toy Shock went with. Visually, I think this looks really cool. There, are, there have been some complaints that the cabinet looks weirdly out of proportion now. It's kind of tall and skinny. Looks a little bit like an um, AT-AT from Star Wars, I guess, which is funny since it's a Star Wars cabinet. But I don't agree with that. This is not going to be um, a one-to-one -one recreation of a pinball machine proportionally unless you want it to sit too short i don't want it to sit too short i want it to sit the proper height of any other industry standard pinball so if you're going to have that and then you're not going to make this thing huge and heavy then what does that mean well it's going to be narrower you know than it is tall relative to a traditional pinball machine i'm totally fine with that i think this looks really cool uh, the legs on the pinball are metal at least in the images that have been leaked this was not confirmed by john but we know that this comes with metal in the imagery. If that's the imagery they've put together for their website, then my guess is that's pretty close to being finalized. There will be uh, Wi-Fi enabled in this cabinet. That is the first product Arcade One Up has ever done with Wi-Fi. So that is huge news. If they're gonna be buying Wi-Fi radios for these cabinets, my bet would be on future cabinets, all the arcades from Arcade One Up will be Wi-Fi enabled.
There will be accelerometers built into the cabinet for tilt. I played a real pinball machine over the weekend while I was out on my trip and uh, used the nudge effect quite a bit. And I was reminded that if you play virtual pinball without the ability to nudge it, it's really not the full experience. There will be solenoids for haptic feedback. Uh, and apparently the final count of the number of solenoids is still to be determined as that is one of the factors for finalizing price, which we'll get to soon. Solenoids, of course, are gonna help you feel like you're really playing pinball as the ball bounces around to uh, just subtly vibrate the cabinet and give you that uh, haptic or tactile sense of feedback. Arcade 1UP claims they're gonna have the best digital pinball games on the market as part of this uh, pinball lineup. They will have adjustable feet on the table for variable height and to ensure, I assume, to ensure a level table. Now I'm gonna guess they're gonna use the same adjustable feet that my cocktail cabinet came with. And those were really nice. Being able to ensure you have a level, level table are, are nice. There wasn't a lot of height travel with those feet and judging from the pictures, it does look like they'll be the same feet. Um, it was just, I think, just over an inch of height travel. So don't think you're gonna be able to adjust this thing, you know, by a foot, as long as they're sticking with those other components they use for the cocktails. We're really just talking an inch of variance here. Now, here's the interesting part. I think the most interesting part of all of this, they recognize the need for a quote unquote beefy processor and RAM. So that's way more um, processor power needed for a good virtual pinball experience than they've ever done before in their other arcade cabinets. And so they've recognized that. Now, will they go far enough to get a truly smooth experience? Well, I think we're gonna have to wait and see once this product hits the market. But they are targeting a $500 price point. Quote unquote, we want a $5,000 experience for $500. Although they admit pricing is not yet finalized, but $500 is their goal. Man, that is an ambitious goal. Now, the scale that Arcade 1UP brings to the table, the economy of scale means that the pricing for their components is gonna be a lot less than if you or I bought this stuff and tried to put one together. But still, $500 for a reasonably high fidelity, even a medium fidelity virtual pinball experience, that just sounds crazy to me. I was assuming this would be seven, eight, nine hundred bucks. I hope they have some real bargaining power with their suppliers because if we're going to get a proper processor and the proper amount of RAM um, and even the resolution, I mean, I, I, I would take 720p as long as it's 60 frames per second, but you know, you'd really want to have 1080p, right? If they're going to get this stuff right, I think it's going to be more than $500. There's definitely opportunity here to sell limited editions direct from arcade1up.com like they did with the box series cabinet and give you higher quality components. I don't know that they'll do that with stuff like processors because they wanna maximize their purchase scale. And if they start splitting their products into all these different um, components, you know, some cabinets come with this component, some cabinets come with that component, then they're hurting their purchasing power. So I don't know that they would do that, but as a consumer, that's what I would like to get if they truly are gonna get this thing down to 500 bucks I tend to doubt this is gonna be the level of quality that um, I would be looking for. Not looking for perfection here, I'm not looking for a $5,000 experience like they're, they're saying, but you know, a $1,000 experience would be a pretty good place to start. Now, another quote from John D, which really caught my attention, we wanna give you the ability to go under the hood and change whatever you need to change. Now, I don't know exactly what that means. He wasn't pressed on that and he didn't elaborate, but it kind of sounds like they're embracing modders here. What I would hope they're doing is selling uh, one replaceable components. So, you know, we're talking about far more um, electrical components than you would have with the normal arcade one up. You've got two monitors to start with. You've got solenoids to start with. You've got all these different parts things will break down so hopefully they're going to be selling everything replaceable hopefully uh, it's modular and they sell upgrades or upgrades are available after market so if you want a higher power processor that works with their board or with their display 
then you can do that. That's what I'm hoping for. But that quote I thought was interesting because that is not, I don't think, representative of Arcade One Up's design philosophy to date, you know, opening things up to tinkerers. And that's what we're talking about here. Now, there still are some remaining questions, and hopefully we get answers to this at CES next week. My first question is, will they recreate any physical tables, or are they just going to stick to existing t digital tables? We know they have a partnership with Zen that's being worked on. It wasn't confirmed, but they've used the Zen logo in their early PR materials that leaked, and you know, I doubt they would be this far along with having a prototype machine ready to go to the public if they didn't have that partnership mapped out. Now, what the details are with Zen maybe is still to be mapped out, but I'm going to go ahead and say that they are already confirmed to be working with Zen, and Zen makes their own digital pinball machines, right? The Star Wars pinball that you can play from them is not the same as a Star Wars pinball you might have played in the 80s, so there's nothing wrong with that, but are we going to be getting digital, or sorry, physical pinball designs too so we can recreate you know some of the pinball machines we all enjoyed growing up with playing back in the day the next question which we know isn't confirmed yet because it was brought up by the representative from arcade on up will dlc tables be available that is not confirmed yet quote unquote no plans currently for dlc that's still being discussed and i think he meant that's still being discussed with their licensors now, if Zen is their primary licensor, well, we know Zen likes selling tables to a user. You download Pinball FX and you can add more tables later. That's kind of their business model. So my guess would be that they're gonna be fine with this. It's just gonna be a matter of figuring out, you know, what is the revenue share and all of that. There is absolutely money to be made here with selling us DLC tables, people would for sure eat that up. Of all the DLC transactions in the world, getting additional pinball tables has to be top of the list for stuff that customers want. A lot of people hate DLC, but if you can get 12, 15, 20 tables in one physical cabinet, then that's awesome. We know that there will be switchable artwork for the back box, and that makes sense. Buy the DLC, order your switchable artwork, and you've just reinvented your table that you have. And Arcade One Up's made revenue uh, even long after they've sold you the table, which again, I talked about in my 2020 video. That's the kind of stuff they're gonna need to do to counter At Games and their momentum, because At Games is making money off us long after we buy their product. Whereas for now, Arcade One Up is not. So I actually do expect DLC to be announced at some point, but we'll see. One last thing, almost forgot to mention. John from Arcade One Up did say they're looking at unique control panels and controls that only they can deliver. They pointed to the Arcade One Up Star Wars yoke that they delivered previously, an experience you can only get with Arcade One Up, and that they want to do more of that. They're even looking at sit down cabinets. I can't imagine delivering something like that for under $500, but who knows. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like, leave us a comment, and make sure you subscribe if you want to hear more. We'll catch you next time.